Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to learn about an important concept in DeepXT that is applying custom boundary condition. This is the third video in our series on boundary conditions for physics and form and neural networks with DeepXT. So boundary conditions play a very important role in solving any differential equations actually. They act like rules that guides the solution to match real world scenarios. Sometimes these kind of uh, boundary conditions make the solution very difficult. And at sometimes just using this Dichlet and Neumann boundary condition makes solution very easy. So that's why we are focusing uh, so much on understanding these boundary conditions properly. In our earlier tutorials, we have learned uh, understanding how to apply Dichlet and Neumann BC's Robin and periodic boundary conditions. In this tutorial, we will see how to define custom boundary conditions like this using uh, operator BC command of uh, deep XTE. We will also solve this uh, Euler beam as an example. You see, these kind of uh, custom boundary conditions are sometimes also called as non-standard boundary conditions. Unlike the commonly used Dichlet and uh, Neumann BCs, which are very straightforward and very popularly applied in many boundary value problems, in Dichlet BC, we specify the boundary constraint on the solution U. Uh, in the Neumann BC, we specify the boundary condition on the first derivative of the primary solution. However, in many real world scenarios, the boundary conditions uh, can be more complex. Uh, these are some examples of uh, complex uh, boundary conditions. So here you see some higher order derivatives, here we see some nonlinear relationships, and uh, here we see some mixed type of uh, boundary conditions where we have derivatives and uh, trigonometric functions. Uh, these kinds of uh, boundary conditions cannot be directly applied using uh, any of the standard boundary condition commands like uh, Dichlet B. BC, Neumann BC, Robin BC or periodic BC commands actually. So to handle such cases, DeepXTE provides a flexible tool called operator BC. This allows us to define uh, boundary conditions in a very general form. For example, conditions involving second and third order derivatives as in this example can be easily implemented using this uh, operator BC. So by using custom boundary condition, we can solve more challenging problems that are closer to real world applications. We will see in this tutorial how to define these conditions step by step. Let's get started. So in this tutorial, we are going to solve this uh, Euler beam equation, which is a fourth order uh, differential equation. It is a very popular equation in the field of uh, structural and uh, mechanical engineering. Uh, this describes the bending of an elastic beam under uh, uh, uniformly distributed load. Here, U of X, uh, represents the displacement of the beam as a function of uh, spatial x coordinate. We are solving this uh, equation in uh, the domain 0, 1. If you see this as a beam, so this is our 0 end and this is our L end. At 0, we are applying a Dirichlet boundary condition u of 0 is equals to 0 and uh, we are applying the Neumann boundary condition u dash of 0 is equal to 0 also at the same end. So this is our Dichlet and this is our Neumann boundary condition. But on the other end, this L is equals to 1. So here we are applying two special boundary conditions u double dash and u triple dash. So this is a second derivative and this is a third derivative. At 1, we are applying 0. This also at 1, we are applying 0. So this is uh, what we are going to apply this uh, operator boundary condition. This is our uh, analytical solution. So we will use this uh, analytical solution only to verify the accuracy of our uh, pin solution. That's it. So this analytical solution will not participate in any of the training or testing process. Here we are importing uh, some important libraries. Uh, we will use DeepXT for creating our neural network, NumPy for uh, handling uh, arrays, Matplotlib for uh, visualizing our results, and uh, this Torch, PyTorch, to create some tensors in the post processing. For this tutorial, I am using PyTorch as backend. So, in this tutorial, I set the PyTorch as a backend using this uh, uh, environmental variable. So, here, this one, DDE underscore backend. Uh, I set up this. Uh, environment variable to PyTorch. So if you set up this, so by default, the default backend uh, that will be taken is PyTorch by DeepXG. And uh, I did this in the bash RC of this WSL. So basically I am mainly using this DeepXG from the WSL. 
So that's why I set up this DeepXT backend the bash RC file. If you are using a Windows machine, you have to do the same. You have to set up this DD underscore backend in the list of environmental variables. That's it. After that, uh, your system will automatically take the DD backend as uh, PyTorch or TensorFlow. Next, here we are uh, defining uh, the governing differential equation. As you see, the governing differential equation involves a fourth order derivative, meaning we are applying two hessians for u actually so when you apply first hessian d square u by dx square will be evaluated and uh, when we apply second uh, hessian to this we will evaluate d square u by dx square for this one so in return we get d power 4 u by dx power 4 so that's what uh, we are doing here so we are applying uh, two uh, grad hessians so in total we will get uh, this uh, d power 4 by dx power 4 derivative. I discussed in detail about this uh, Hessian and uh, Jacobians in uh, our uh, video on this uh, Ditchlet and Neumann BC. So if you want to know more about this uh, Hessian and uh, Jacobian uh, commands of TPXT, please uh, have a look at this tutorial. And uh, here I have defined the conditions for uh, Ditchlet and Neumann boundary conditions. As you know, these we are applying on the left boundary. So you know, right? So here uh, we are setting up the boundary value and uh, here we are uh, defining a function boundary L this verifies whether the given point is lying on the boundary or not that's it first it will verify whether the point is on the boundary or not and second it will apply a value on the boundary so here we are using uh, the same functions for both the Ditchlet and Neumann boundary condition so if you look at here this boundary value takes only one argument uh, x that is uh, the input features and uh, the boundary l takes only two arguments that is the input features and uh, this one on boundary so you cannot give more arguments to these functions as well these functions will eventually go into these commands boundary value l and the boundary l so if you look at here the digital and neumann bc uh, we are applying the same uh, uh, arguments actually but this this digital bc will apply this uh, boundary value on the primary field variable that is displacement but this neumann bc will apply the same value over the first derivative of the primary displacement and this derivative evaluation will be internally uh, taken care we no need to worry about it and uh, after that we are applying this uh, custom boundary condition on the right boundary so for applying this uh, custom boundary condition so here um, i have written some functions we will come back to this uh, in a minute first we will understand the structure of operator bc command and then we will come back to these functions next is our uh, exact solution so exact solution is a normal function this is func and it takes one argument and it will evaluate uh, uh, the given analytical solution that is this and then here we are defining the geometry so we are defining the geometry uh, using this uh, interval command of this uh, geometry class using uh, 0 comma 1 as arguments meaning we are defining this uh, 1d beam between 0 and 1 this is 0 and this is 1 here we are actually defining the Ditchlet and uh, Neumann BC so here I am giving names BC underscore DBC for Ditchlet BC BC underscore NBC for uh, Neumann BC and next is the operator BC here I have written a detailed explanation over this uh, operator BC using this uh, operator BC class you can enforce any condition that can be expressed mathematically including conditions like uh, higher order derivatives nonlinear relationships or a mixed type of conditions uh, with operator bc you will be able to specify the boundary conditions in the form of a function and that function takes three arguments inputs outputs and x as i defined here inputs are the input tensor so in our uh, uh, Euler beam problem so these inputs are just a special x coordinates that's it but the main thing is this input has to be given in the form of a tensor of corresponding library so if it is a pytorch so you have to input this uh, pytorch tensor if it is a tensor flow you have to input this inputs as tensor flow tensor so basically this is a tensor and the uh, outputs is basically the model predicted value for those inputs actually so this is also a tensor but this x is basically the same uh, version of the inputs but this is given in the form of a numpy array that's it this is the function basic function that we define to implement our uh, custom boundary conditions actually so within this function you can define any boundary condition that you want with these arguments the syntax for applying the boundary condition is as follows so here this 
first argument is geometry we are passing the geometry and the second argument is a function and this is the function and the third argument is uh, on boundary and uh, this is also a function that verifies whether the given point is on the boundary or not i have detailedly explained here so if you want to pass this video and uh, go through this explanation in detail as i said before in the euler beam problem we are applying a two boundary condition that is uh, u double dash is equals to zero u triple dash is equals to zero at uh, the extreme uh, right end this is how i defined uh, these conditions here so as i said this uh, geom is the geometry and uh, second derivative is a function that sets the value after evaluating the second derivative of the main primary field variable and this is the boundary r is a function that evaluates whether the given point in this geometry is lying on the right boundary similarly this uh, obc2 is uh, another operator bc condition so here we are setting up this uh, third derivative as i said these two are functions and these functions i have defined uh, here actually so this is your uh, second derivative function and this is your third derivative function so as i said this function takes three arguments so the first one is the input tensor second one is the output tensor and the third one numpy array of inputs so in the current uh, specification i am not using this uh, numpy array of input values because i am directly operating with the input tensors so that's why i have given underscore here actually so in python underscore is uh, used as a placeholder for variables that are uh, required syntax wise but are not actually used in the code so that's why i have given uh, underscore here and uh, similarly here i am evaluating uh, this uh, triple derivative here ddy and uh, triple dy these are again another some functions so these functions i have defined so what basically ddy does is it will evaluate the hessian meaning the second derivative and uh, what Jacobian does is so it will evaluate first derivative this one will evaluate d square u by dx square and this one will does this so d square u by dx square eventually by x cube so this one is done by hessian and this is done by Jacobian yes, right? so here we are doing this first we are evaluating the hessian and here for this Jacobian as a function we are sending this uh, hessian and next uh, we are defining the data data is a deep xd class that combines all the geometry main partial differential equation and uh, the boundary conditions so here this is our geometry so within this geometry here this pd is a function and within the geometry these four are the boundary conditions that we are specifying digital boundary condition Neumann boundary condition and this one is the operator bc1 operator bc2 and here 15 comma 2 are the number of points that we are taking within the domain and these two are the number of points that we are taking at the boundaries so we have two boundaries right so that's why we are taking two one on the left and the other one is on the right and here this is a solution function so this function is used only for evaluating this uh, relative error that's it and uh, here we are defining this uh, num test so here i have to mention one thing so in our telegram group one student asked about uh, why the num test points are higher than the training points so if you look at here num test we are taken 100 and for uh, training we are taken 17 combinedly so the point here is num test refers to the number of points across both the domain and the boundary use it to evaluate the model after training you can choose any number of points for training and testing independently as they serve different purposes so here we use 100 points for testing and changing this number does not affect the training process and for training we used uh, 17 points in total and these points are chosen based on the desired accuracy of the result if the predictions are poor you may have to increase these points if the predictions are very better you may reduce this points to save some computational cost but changing this number does not affect your result another thing is in physics informed neural networks we don't have any predefined data so we generate our own data using the collocation points so we are, you are free to choose any number of points that you want the only thing is uh, increasing the number of points inside the training will eventually increase your computational cost so keep that in mind so play with these parameters comfortably to get uh, an accurate result after that here we are setting up uh, the neural network parameters so here we're defining uh, the layer sizes so we have one input layer and uh, three hidden layers with 30 neurons each and uh, one output layer and uh, here we are defining a uh, tanh activation function and uh, glorot uniform initializer and uh, here we are defining this uh, uh, net object using this uh, nn module so this function takes 
layer size activation and the initializer as arguments and then it uh, sets up this uh, net object and we are going to use this uh, data and uh, net in setting up this model after that we issue this uh, compile and uh, train commands of the model so we issue this compile command with uh, atom optimizer learning rate as 0.001 and uh, we use l2 relative error for evaluating the test metric so this is the test metric so this comes from this uh, l2 relative error and then we are issuing this uh, train model dot train with uh, 3000 iterations or epochs after that this uh, training will be done so overall uh, our model took uh, 92 seconds for training total loss in training that we have got is 7.18 and a test loss is 5.57 and our last test metric is 1.94 the numbers are pretty decent so uh, we can confidently say that our uh, training was good after training here i have defined uh, the plotting so here i am just creating some 100 random points to evaluate the pin solution and uh, i am defining here 20 random points to evaluate the exact solution so i have taken just a different number of points just to make sure the plot is clear that's it so if you increase this number or decrease this number this uh, scatter plot will become dense or coarse that's it so just for better visibility i have chosen 20 points here and uh, the model predictions i'm evaluating using this uh, model dot predict command this function takes this x values as a numpy array and this will gives you uh, a y predictions as a numpy array that's it and uh, here we are using this uh, normal uh, exact solution function to evaluate this y exact after that i'm plotting here using this uh, matplotlib library so this is the overall plot we have got actually so at 0 comma 0 here we specify this uh, digital and neumann bc so you can see like a solution exactly uh, satisfied these conditions and similarly at the end we specify the operator bcs two operator bcs so you can take a look at this analytical solution and uh, the pin solution uh, exactly matches it means the pin solution exactly satisfied the operator boundary and within the domain throughout the domain our solution is uh, decent and uh, comparable with the exact solution that's all for this tutorial before we wrap up so let me quickly introduce you to an important method called error this method is available in all types of boundary conditions like digital bc in operator bc neumann bc so this method is available for all types of boundary conditions including the robin and operator bcs as well so you can see that function here error this is a neumann bc error this is operator bc you can see this right so this is the error function so you will see that error function in every command periodic bc like that this error method is used to retrieve the residual error value this residual error is useful for uh, evaluating how well the model satisfies the boundary condition after training so here we get uh, some outputs like this actually for neumann bc so this is the residual and this is the mean square error of the residual and this mean square error of the residual we will use in the training process to optimize the loss function though this uh, error function for example this one x inputs outputs beginning ending and some auxiliary variable so this error function looks same in all the uh, commands but eventually the way these inputs needs to be given will be different actually so we will explore the details uh, of the error method step by step in our uh, next tutorial so we will calculate and interpret the residuals for different types of boundary conditions including the custom ones that we just dealt currently in this tutorial so that's all for this tutorial if you have any questions or doubts feel free to ask them in the comment section below i'll try my best to help you out so if you have found this video helpful please hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more tutorials like this thank you for watching happy learning